Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy Minister Jeff Khadebe released the long-awaited draft integrated resources plan for public comment this week. Chair Screamer joins me to discuss what's in the plan. Hi, Chair. Yes, no. What is the IRP and why is it important? Well, the IRP is really a model of how we're going to meet electricity demand into the future, in this case up to 2030, and what generation sources we're going to add. So you need to first project or forecast demand, which we know uh, since the last IRP 2010 uh, is, has really collapsed. So we're back to sort of 2007 levels in terms of electricity demand. And then once you've got that demand, you also look at what plant might be going out of the system. So we know between, well, during the 2020s, we start with the decommissioning of some of the coal-fired power stations. A lot of power stations will be de decommissioned, not all of them by 2030, but uh, by 2050, just about the whole fleet would have matured, other than maybe Madupi and Kusile. Um, and then you have to find a way, uh, the RP, the modelers, to look for the, the, the least cost way of filling the gaps. Um, so this putting supply in to meet that demand. And that's what this, this RP does. And, uh, and um, then what government does usually, or the policy maker, We'll see if there's any policy adjustments that they want to make for different reasons. So in other countries, you know, um, for instance, Germany, they wanted to get rid of um, nuclear early. They had to, that's a policy adjustment. It's not a least cost decision. In South Africa's case, we want to put certain things into our mix that are not necessarily least cost, and that is a policy adjustment. So there is scope for policy adjustment. And why it's important is that this then, in so the South African context, this plan gives you an allocation for what different generation technologies are going to be put into the, the system over the next 12 years in this case. And it then allows the Minister of Energy to create determinations. Those determinations can either say that the state owned utility will build certain things, as we've seen with Madupi, Kusile and Ngula, or it might say that we're going to have allocations for different other generation technologies, wind, solar, gas, biogas, um, all those other d d uh, concentrated solar power. So there's a lot of other generation options that you then uh, add into that, uh, that puzzle. Um, and then in the end with the policy adjustments and with that modeling, you come up with this plan. Those determinations allow for ESKIM to procure and to raise the, f the money with the certainty that, that uh, the regulator is gonna sign off on these projects. Um, and then you've got the, the RPPs potentially being able to to, to bid in to different processes, as we've seen very successfully with the renewable program over the last nearly 10 years now. So that's why it's important, and it's a big plan, and we've waited a long time. And finally this week, we get a draft uh, 2018 RP for public comment. What is in the current draft plan, and what sort of comments can we expect? Well, the draft plan makes it clear that the least cost uh, option for closing those gaps that I spoke to you about in the context of much weaker demand um, would be to add only solar photovoltaic, onshore wind and gas. Uh, that would be the least cost model, but it makes about five policy adjustments. The two, I suppose, big ticket policy adjustments are the decision to continue with the coal IPP programs. Those were the two programs that have already been procured under the coal baseload uh, bidding process, which took place around the end of 2015 and the preferred bidders were, na were named in 2016. So that would be a thousand megawatts of co new coal, not from Eskom, but from IPPs. And the other big ticket one from what I could see would be the, um, the, gr the Inga project. The, we've signed a treaty with the DRC where 2,500 megawatts of whatever capacity gets built up at the, the Inga site. And if it can be evacuated through uh, an efficient transmission system, we will take 2,500 mega of that. It's not a signed deal, but it is a treaty that we've entered into. So it's a policy adjustment made uh, to, the, um, to the system. And then uh, they've sustained things like keeping caps on how much uh, annual renewable can come in, in terms of solar and wind, at 1,000 solar PV, 1,600 megawatts of wind is the cap. And they've made a few other policy adjustments, including, I think quite interestingly, but not really built into the annual allocations, but set aside is 200 megawatts of embedded generation, mostly rooftop solar, 
which I think there will be a lot of interest around as well. So I think when you ask what will the comments uh, relate to, I think um, there will be some maybe contestation of the lease cost, although I think the models are quite clear in terms of what the lease cost is now. It's a combination of solar, wind, and really flexible generation. In this case, the government has decided with gas, so the gas is a big winner in this plan. Solar and wind are, good, uh, are solidly growing technologies. Uh, and the other contestations will be around those other policy adjustments around coal, inga, etc. I think there'll be some focus there. And I think for the renewables community, which I think is generally happy that at least things are becoming more rational in terms of the way the plan is being rolled out, is concerned about a three-year gap from about 2022 to 2025 in procurement of new renewable energy. And I think that's a whole issue around timing in terms of the, the much weaker demand uh, that we've had in the system, the bringing on of the final units of Madupi and Kosile, and then the addition of those two coal RPPs sort of some way crowds out renewables during those early years of the next decade. So I think that's also going to be an issue for contestation. And obviously we might get um, other, other views around not enough coal possibly, not enough nuclear possibly, those sort of um, comments around the, the plan. Um, but I think the issue there and where government's fairly on strong ground is that the models kind of show that it's going to be hard to sort of wedge in nuclear, especially at the large chunks type level. And in the time frame that we're looking at, 2030, remember even the, the draft 2016 RP said that there'd be no nuclear before 2037. So that's the difficulty there. And then I think for coal to meet our carbon commitments and then to compete with this combination of low cost wind, which is getting uh, cheaper, low cost solar, which is getting extremely, uh, f uh, which where the, the rate of decline has been very steep in terms of cost um, and backed up or complemented by flexible generation. I think there is some concern about how much imported gas is going to be in the system. And I think there's going to be com comments about that, but it's still, once you do the numbers, it's still going to be a lot cheaper than those two other conventional solutions. But I think we'll still see quite a lot of discussion around this document. And interestingly, the minister has given uh, 60 days to comment rather than the initial 30 days that was planned. What will happen after the public comment period closes? Well, the minister made it clear that he wants to move fast after that period. So he's put out this uh, document, he's given that extra bit of period. He then wants to, I suppose, they'll have to digest after those 60 days to, um, what has been commented on, whether there's any validity to it. Um, and then they'll take it back to cabinet so that it can become the, the integrated resource plan for South Africa. And that will really set in motion a whole lot of, uh, trigger a whole lot of other things, mainly the ministerial determinations, which will then define how we go about procuring um, the, the next rounds of renewables, the, nec the first rounds of imported gas probably, and potentially later um, some regional gas as well. So there's it will, it will basically set in motion the certainty that uh, the industry has been crying out for uh, for some time and there's been that absence which has really constrained investment which, uh, which has been okay because of the, uh, the lack of demand in the system. But with you when you see those coal stations coming up for decommissioning, even if we don't grow in the mid-2020s, we're going to have to plug the gaps left by those older coal fire stations that are going to be withdrawn from the system. So we need to get our act together. We need to have investor certainty. And I'm sure the, one of the ambitions will be in whether the timing will be exactly right, I'm not sure, would be to have this RP in place by the time Cyril Ramaphosa, the president, uh, has his investor conference, uh, which is still scheduled for some time this year. But it's not clear that the timing will be exactly right there because as we know, um, on that $100 billion investment aspiration. The minister, Jeff Gadebe, has said that he wants uh, $25 billion of that to come in the form of energy investments. So I think that's the next steps. We need to finalise it, we need the ministerial determinations, and we need to get going. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.